So this is big news for recruiting. Penn State is hosting the number one quarterback, the number one player in the nation for the class of 2025. Are the Nittany Lions a long shot in his recruitment, or do they actually have a chance of landing him? You are Locked On Nittany Lions, your daily podcast on the Penn State Nittany Lions, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, that is right. You are locked on Nittany Lines. Thanks so much for making us your first listen and watch every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm Zach Seiko, your host of the show, and we bring him back from the Locked On Podcast Network. That is Brian Smith, the recruiting expert when it comes to high school football going up to college. And well, Whiteout Weekend is here. Penn State's taken on Iowa. And there's plenty of prospects that are going to be and plenty of prospects that are going to be in attendance. So we have a, a lot of names to discuss and what impact they could have if they ultimately become Penn State Nittany Lions. Now, we're, we like to think that Brian is the king of recruiting, but also the king of recruiting is linked in jobs these days. Every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college terms and conditions apply. Now he's all now someone else is also a king in this instance. And that's the number one quarterback in the class of 2025. Brian Bryce Underwood is coming to happy Valley. He's also bringing some teammates as well. So Penn state really has a solid group coming out of the Detroit, Michigan area. They've, they've had some success with Michigan. I say that Kalen King and Kobe King give a recruiting pitch. <laughs> While, while he's in town, but to get the number one quarterback on campus for your biggest game, and not necessarily the biggest matchup, but your biggest home game under the lights, the whiteout, the annual tradition, to get him to see that, and he's already been on campus. So this seems a little bit strategic here because Bryce Underwood and his family said that they plan to get back onto campus. Well, what a better way to do that? Uh, what better way to do that right now uh, like I said, for the whiteout and everything else, uh, Penn State's chances don't, I don't want to spoil, I don't want to burst any bubbles here, but they're going to go up against some stiff competition because I saw Bryce Underwood as either a Michigan commit, maybe Michigan State, but mainly I, I saw the Wolverines as the leading leading team uh, and then the entire SEC conference because he is that good. So it's not like Penn State uh, isn't going to have competition for his services. He's been to LSU at least three times that I know of. Yeah, and he's looked at programs all over the place. He plays with Sound Mind, Sound, Sound Body. It's the best seven-on program in Michigan. They they go all over the country, so he's been on a lot of visits. I don't think we should worry too much right now. But if Penn State's getting their second visit with him, they're in the race. Yeah. That's yeah. about all you can really ask for. Your your point about bringing some of his teammates along is encouraging. Obviously, Penn State's not just going to hand out scholarships to anybody. So what players? Are they for the future in terms of like, where do they rank on their board? That could play a role because, hey, who doesn't want to play with their high school teammates? But this game is very unique. I've never been to a Penn State game anyway, but I love watching whiteout games. I'm curious to see what Bryce says afterwards. He's a really articulate kid. I've been around him a few times. Mm -hmm. I think you'll enjoy it. But Penn State's going to have to battle Michigan and LSU and among others. So long way to go. And Penn State, I think the development of Drew Aller along with with Mike Yersich and James Franklin at the helm has a lot to do with this because typically, okay, outside of Christian Hackenberg, Anthony Morelli, Penn State, at least in the recent, like look at Jackson Smollett, Ethan Grunkmeyer, Trace McSorley, right? Sean Clifford. A lot of these guys, I don't want to say they were flying under the radar, but they were your three-star, borderline four-star recruits. And now, hey, Drew Aller's changing the way that those trends are. You bring in Bryce Underwood, who's not only the number one quarterback, I should make it clear. He is the number one player in the nation, Brian. Uh, Bryce Underwood is a, is a very good talent, listed at six foot three, 210 pounds. So he could definitely build, go into that Drew Aller mold, and he's got a little mobility to him as well. Drew Aller's not a statue by any means either. So I, I like this trend that Mike Yersich is starting to establish with just highly talented quarterback prospects coming into Happy Valley. Well, I would say that he's more than just a little bit athletic. He's a kid that can play receiver or anything he wants. He's that kind of athlete. He's a freak. Um, seeing him live took all questions away from that. He's got a cannon for an arm. Uh, Underwood is 6'4", something like that. I mean, he's a big kid. 
and he has zero body fat. He, he's what you're looking for because he's off a computer screen. So Franklin and his staff, like they, like I've said several times on this show, they've done a really good job with underclassmen, not just in PA, New Jersey, Maryland, but like across the country. And this is one of the ways you do it. Uh, I'm sure, like you said, our, that has to help, right? Because he's mm-hmm. played pretty well so far. Uh, they're about to get, I mean, Iowa may not score much, but their defense is legit. They're very, very well coached. Yeah. We'll see what our does. And if he plays well, that's going to help Penn State's cause. And right now, Penn State's just like everybody else trying to keep their foot in the door, that second visit. I'm curious what happens afterwards. It's also important to note a little more specifically here, Brian, because you've mentioned this, that Penn State is finding more success than they have in the past. They've been strictly regional, strictly in the state of Pennsylvania. It's not like Bryce Underwood is coming out of the state of Pennsylvania where Penn State is the best football program. It's been that way for a long time. It's right now in the present. Okay, we're talking about recruiting in the present day. So Penn State is the best football program. So it's not this benefit of, well, he's in state, so we're most likely going to land his commitment. Penn State's going into Ohio to get Drew Aller and Ethan Grunkmeyer. They're going into Michigan to at least entertain Bryce Underwood. And and then they're getting on top of adding the players that are very talented from the state of Pennsylvania. So it's like you've said already on the show, Brian, that Penn State is finding success in Florida, uh, Texas, more so than they have in the past. I'm not saying that's, hey, that's where they're getting every single prospect. It's it's in Pennsylvania and then in the mid-Atlantic region with Maryland, Virginia, D.C., uh, a little bit of Wisconsin in this past cycle, but Penn State, but that's the thing. Now they're going into Wisconsin and they're getting guys. They're recruiting in Texas. It's just, I find it very interesting that Penn State has had the ample success. And I'm glad that you brought it up. So Bryce Underwood Mm -hmm. isn't exactly a a one-off case here. This is the way that things are when it comes to Penn State recruiting now. They've become a national program. And there's a lot of risk with that. But they've handled the balance between keeping Mm -hmm. some primary guys home and finding national players, especially if it's a truly good player, like corner, you, you take them wherever you can get them. Yep. Quarterback, same kind of deal, D-line. Penn State's prioritized those spots. And then, of course, they've had a just tremendous run with running backs in the last five to ten years. So I don't see any reason to change what they're doing. It's making their roster better. It's making them more explosive. A kid like yeah. Underwood, though, that takes it over the moon because his upside yeah. is as good as it gets. Um, until you see him live, it's kind of hard to put in perspective, but the upside tools are just incredible. Uh, where would you say that Bryce Underwood kind of ranks in general? I know he's the number one net player in the nation for 2025, but to compare him up against Drew Aller, Jackson Arnold, Arch Manning, Nico Imalave out of Tennessee, right? Where where does he – is he the best of the bunch? Is he in the middle of the pack, too close to tell, or is he still – He's, he's not as good as those guys, but he, he's pretty up there. I would say he's one of the top two or three. His ability wow. to run and escape uh, may make him number one, but, I mean, he's only a junior in high school right now. I need to, need to see a senior film, which he obviously cannot sure. do. But, I mean, where he's at now and the physicality that he can present, like running over somebody or running around him, jump over somebody, he's a kid – that could play volleyball, basketball, baseball, wouldn't matter. And he would be a top-notch athlete. And he's got a deft touch on the deep ball. All the things you're looking for. That's why he's been recruited nationally. He could fit in any offense. Doesn't matter. Can't really draw it up off a computer screen any better. Well, Penn State fans just know that, yes, it's, it's on the outside looking in for getting Bryce Underwood to commit. But never say never. Penn State's in it, despite having Michigan, Michigan State, the entire SEC, Clemson, you name it, just about every school at USC, UCLA, the schools that are coming from the Pac-12 to the Big Ten uh, a, a nation. Everyone in the nation is recruiting him. Now, we're going to talk some more recruiting here. The Whiteout has a long list of prospects. There also could be some ones on commitment watch. In this upcoming segment, we're going to discuss that. But since we are discussing recruiting, it's important to talk about today's sponsor of the episode, and that is LinkedIn Jobs. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. 
as easy to create a free job post on LinkedIn Jobs. Then all you got to do is add your job, the purple hiring frame, to let you know, let your LinkedIn profile spread the word that you are, in fact, hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you would like to interview and then hire. That's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering qualified candidates versus the leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find qualified qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash locked on college. That is LinkedIn.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. And today's episode is also sponsored by DoorDash. Loving love the convenience of getting what you want right to your door with DoorDash grocery delivery. You can stock up for the week or order last minute cravings pretty conveniently. You've trusted DoorDash to deliver your restaurant favorites, and now you can get them to grocery deliver that actually delivers too. With thousands of grocery stores to choose from, you'll find the best in the neighborhood and boost your local economy with each and every order. You'll get exactly what you ordered, or we'll make it right. So sit back, enjoy quality groceries just like you picked them out yourselves. Get 50% off your first DoorDash order up to a $20 value when you use promo code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE at checkout. Limited time offer, terms apply. That's 50% off up to a $20 no minimum subtotal and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE. Don't forget, that is code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE for 50% off your first order with DoorDash. And the Locked On Podcast Network is amping up its college football coverage with Locked On College Football Kickoff live every Friday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern time. So people are going to see that today. I made a guest appearance the last time talking everything as far as I thought I was going to be previewing a game, but they wanted to go bigger picture and talk about Penn State as a playoff contender. So you will get more of that. You'll probably hear Brian is the host of Locked On Knowles. So I'm sure that you, if you haven't made an appearance already, Brian, you're certainly going to make one to talk Florida State. Uh, so Locked On College Football Kickoff live every Friday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern time. You can find that on any Locked On College channel, live on YouTube, and then wherever you get your podcast. And as I mentioned, Brian is not only the recruiting expert here in Locked On, but also the host of Locked On Knowles. Let's get back to Penn State, seeing there's going to be some prospects on Commitment Watch, but just some other names that Penn State fans should know about that the Penn State coaching staff is pretty excited about to have on campus here and just to see, like I said, the best atmosphere and on all of college football, really. This game itself is the best event across the entire college football landscape when it comes to the regular season. So there's a long list of names. There's over 50 prospects. The sidelines are going to be pretty packed with with kids and their families. But uh, Brian, who... Who do you think should stand out on this list? Maybe it's not necessarily so much of the local kids, but some of the kids that are really out of state that are making an appearance at the whiteout game. Uh, Ryan G is a kid that I like out of Georgia. Uh, Penn state's got some pretty good tight end history in the last 10 years or so. He's a kid that's big enough to be a blocker, be in line, but he's also somebody that can be a receiver as well. Uh, I know we're going to probably talk a little about Brady O'Hara. So I'll, I'll leave that to you. Um, mm-hmm. I'm a big fan of Mr. Hayes out of Aliquippa. There's a couple other kids from out of state, but like the first thing I want to say is they've done such a good job getting the local kids. You can never forget about that. The guy that most people probably don't know much about is Nate Roberts. He's a okay. tight end out of Oklahoma. He might be the best tight end in the country. He is a guy that can make plays after the catch. It's very abnormal for a tight end. He's, he's an NFL player. He's coming for the visit and I've seen his film. It is a, it is ridiculous. I'd have taken him as a sophomore. Uh, his film kind of jumps off the page, to put it mildly. Um, they've got kids from New Jersey, PA, and all that stuff. But I just yeah. see every time I kind of go through the list and they add add to the list, there's somebody else from another area. It, yeah. It's great to see that. they got kids from IMG Academy. they got kids from Detroit. they got kids from Cleveland, all over the country. Yeah. I, I I'm surprised because like when I grew up, they just didn't recruit that way. They recruited about five states and occasionally they'd get a kid from North Carolina or something in addition, but they just recruited right there in Ohio, PA, New York, New Jersey, Maryland, maybe a little Virginia. And that was it. They didn't have to. So obviously Penn state was great during that era, but things have changed. And I think Franklin yeah. 
has done such a good job of finding select kids. I mean, Bryce Underwood's the obvious. <laughs> they, they've done such a good job finding some niche kids and whatnot, like the two yeah. corners from Florida. They're from Mandarin. Mm -hmm. There's no reason to think that Penn State can't get anybody now. Uh, I know I've made some of my brethren down here in Florida mad about talking about Penn State doing a good job in the Sunshine State, but I bet you there's probably going to be a handful of kids from Florida that aren't even on this list. That would be my my guess. So Florida kids kind of make those decisions late. But hats off to Penn State, man. They've done a great job. So as far as other Penn State recruits that are in attendance, let's talk about the commits. I just want to list them off. Everybody has, should become more familiar with them if you haven't sure. already. We've talked about them on the show. Cooper Cousins, Peter Gonzalez, Ethan Grunkmeyer, Kari Jackson, Dewan Lane, Quentin Martin, Garrett Sexton, Anthony nice. Specka, Vabu Toure, and Kenny Woesley, and then Messiah Mickens. Those were all 2024, and then Messiah Mickens uh, out of the class of 2026. Uh, so no, at, at least it looks like on the visitor list, no 2025 uh, commits are going to be present, but DeAndre Barker, who's in Texas, that's a, a, a little <laughs> understandable here, and then you just have... You just had Jalen Matthews decommit, so that that is a little bit understandable. Now, Jalen Harvey is going to be in attendance. Oh, He's still yes. uncommended. Un yes, a very familiar name between you and I, Brian, and to the, the Penn State faithful, uh, <laughs> someone who's also a counterpart to him on the defensive line, Ernest Willer, who's a four-star according yeah, to rivals. He's uh, number two in the state of Maryland. This is a very intriguing prospect, so Penn State, ideally, you would like to get both, but – uh, if you can get at least one, okay, that's that's a win, especially with the way that Brian Robinson is uh, at least projecting away from Penn State. They're kind of third on his top three. It looks like Kentucky is going to land him over Michigan. Kentucky just went into Michigan and flipped the twin players. I thought that was that was crazy. As far as some other guys, so Brady O'Hara is very a very interesting prospect, and uh, I think someone like Deji Jones, who's a why are you seeing more wide receivers visiting Penn State? And that's a testament to wide receivers coach Marcus Hagan. So this list, uh, a lot of 2025 kids, a good amount of 2026 kids, uh, even one 2027 kid, Larry Moon the third, who actually Penn State very recently offered at a summer camp, uh, showing like Penn State very good at recruiting players early. So 2027, you think that's far out? Uh, it, it's never too far out. Let's get to the commitment watch players. And there's some of the ones that we have already mentioned. They're the obvious ones. Brady O'Hara, 2025 tight end. There's a projection for him to commit to Penn State. Same thing with Tyke Hayes. Hayes that you mentioned, the running back, four-star right. class of 2025. You get those two players that are already projected, already love Penn State. And then you come out of the whiteout game with a win. And I can guarantee that Penn State is going to win against Iowa in the whiteout game. I can say that with confidence. And you could potentially get at least one maybe even two prospects, maybe even three. Maybe Jalen Harvey likes what he sees because I'd also throw him on commitment watch. And same with Ernest Willer. So those two 2024 guys, but I feel, a little, I feel a little more confident saying that, Ty, I believe it or not, two, 25, two 2025 kids, I have more confidence in saying that they will commit in Tyke Hayes and Brady O'Hara than I do the likes of Jalen Harvey, unfortunately. Well, that's just part of recruiting, man. Every yep. kid is different. I've given up trying to figure out a mass answer because every every guy kind of beats yeah. to his own drum. So if they can get Harvey to sign, that's great. But boy, I tell you what, Penn State's put a lot of energy in that. That has been a long a lot drum of energy. <laughs> that's, uh, the Willer kid, I know, a uh, great young man, and he he's a ball player. He's got schools across the country have offered him for a couple of years. I'm curious to see what he thinks, too. Because that's another one of those kids that's kind of in between size. Now, he could end up growing into a three-tech, but he's around 250 or so. Maybe he's a strong side end. That's a good football player, though, and a great kid. So, again, Penn State's list in general is great. I mean, they, they even yeah. have Bia Bell on the list. He's a 26 quarterback out of Florida that I know. I, it yeah. is a really, really <laughs> diverse group. I'd also, I just want to throw a couple more names that are at least long shots, but they could still, maybe just the whiteout weekend absolutely impresses them. I would say DJ McClary, a linebacker out of New Jersey. This is someone that is vaguely projected to Penn State, at least for the time being, uh, has a very good relationship with the coaching staff. Uh, that is somebody that we could see commit as well. And, and I'd say Joshua Williams, in-state offensive lineman. I, I'm not seeing Michael Carroll on the list. He's a, another Penn State legacy. I figured he would be at this game, but uh, so – 
He was projected to commit a while ago. He had some crystal balls, some future casts. It looks like that is still a good sign, but it's not going to happen at least uh, in the very near future. And then a name that Penn State fans, because Bryce Underwood, the sweepstakes, are, are a long shot for Penn State, unfortunately. They have a chance, but it's not the best chance when you see who they're up against. Malik Washington, quarterback out of Archbishop Spalding, the Maryland area. I actually grew up about 30 minutes from that school. And I saw Malik Washington at the Elite 11 camp. Personally, I know, like, at the time, he's a rising junior. The way he performed... I know that the Elite 11 is going to be a little more partial to rising seniors to go out to California for that final competition. But it was hard for me to not sit back and say that he was the best quarterback in the class of 2025, the rising juniors that were there at that summer Elite 11 that was hosted by State College. So I'm very impressed with Malik Washington. I think he's a top 10 quarterback consensus for the class of 2025. I certainly believe that he's going to move up. But after seeing Washington in person, Watching the high school tape, if Penn State doesn't land Bryce Underwood, they should, Penn State fans, the coaching staff, the team, the program should be very content if they are able to get Washington. And Washington is enamored with the university. He's been, I've, I've lost count of how many times he's visited and wanted to be around campus. That's a great sign. You can't win without quarterback play. If yeah. you're not sure about that statement, call Nick Saban. So there's a lot of things that go into it. I mean, yeah, what's going on there is just bizarre. Had to bring it up. But like Penn State has gone through stretches and every other school that is a major football program, when the quarterback gets hurt or anything else, that's no good. So every year you have to bring in somebody. When somebody transfers, so be it. Just bring in the best player, yep. kind of just let the, let the chips fall where they may. I mean, you just don't know. That's a hard, hard position to project. And getting the kid local is also something I like. It less likely to transfer if he's more familiar. I mean, he's three hours away from state college or whatever. It's not that big a deal. But Penn State's getting some kids on campus at quarterback that are great players for 25 and beyond. So like I said, Diabell, they know. Yeah, now that they've got some quarterback play, like they want to keep it at a high level. It's smart. Congrats to them. And Penn State, now the class of 2024 is still finding its time to cement itself. Jalen Harvey on campus, Ernest Willer. Can Penn State add one? Can they add both? Because it looks like they're starting to lose the race in the class of 2024 rankings as a whole. This was a team that had a top 10 class. It looked like it was solidified. And now could they even fall out of the top 15? We're going to discuss that with Brian in just a moment. But let's hear from another sponsor of today's episode. And that is FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get up to 200, get 200 in bonus bets. Guaranteed. That's all it takes. $5 to get 200 in bonus bets. All customers who bet $5 also get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. So now is the best time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book. The app is easy, super easy to use, and you can bet on everything from totals, money lines, spreads, player props, you name it. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season with an offer you don't want to miss. FanDuel the official partner of the NFL. And in this final segment, Brian, let's discuss where Penn State stands with the class of 2024 rankings. People are seeing it, right? It's not like this is something that is underlying. It's out in the open. For Penn State, they are losing ground in the class of 2024 rankings. It's They've been relatively quiet on the recruiting trail in season because you watch schools like Oklahoma, Kentucky, Oregon, they are jumping up the recruiting rankings. Ohio State at least wasn't – they're quiet very recently. However, they they landed their punches in the recruiting rankings uh, just before the season started and got big-name players to go along with that. So if Penn State is going to want to keep up in the Big Ten by itself, right? And then the class of 2024 rankings in the nation – I mean, right now, Penn State is still, it depends where you look, but they're inside the top 15. But now there's the threat of could they fall out of the top 15, especially if they don't get anybody that we've named. They've missed out on the likes of Nigel Smith. It doesn't look good for Brian Robinson. Nick Marsh is still committed to Michigan State, despite everything that's going on with the Mel Tucker situation. Not going to comment on that, but it would be nice if Penn State could flip a four-star wide receiver, which they were in line to get until the Spartans made their final recruiting pitch with Mel Tucker in the lead there. But Penn State, 
I think they need to get both defensive end recruits. They need to get Jalen Harvey. They need to get Ernest Willer. And those guys are high profile. They're not fringe three stars. These are solid four-star players that are ranked highly in their state. They are in the, whether it's the ESPN 300 or the 24 seven top 250, right? These guys are very, are valued recruits. So for Penn state, and then they're also bringing on this one, I, I would say is a rising recruit in the whole process. Lou guard, a dope pie, uh, 24 seven is the only one that has a, a recruiting ranking on him. And he's currently a three star uh, at that. So Penn state found some success recruiting the likes of chimney. Ono, who turned into this, uh, from this quiet prospect to a consensus four star, maybe a dope pie turns into that as well. But Penn state, uh, it would be quite the dream if they can get all three of those defensive line prospects that I mentioned, I would say they definitely need to get Harvey Willer flip Nick Marsh if you can. And this class is definitely top 10, but if they don't do any of that, they could fall outside of the top 15. I'm not a huge rankings guy, but at least they've done most of what they needed with their, their needs. Number one, they got a quarterback okay. again. That starts, that starts yeah. the discussion. You need a QB. Yeah. And you always got to get that. And they've done a pretty good job on the lines. And I know you're still trying to finalize on a couple of those guys you mentioned, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. But they're getting more skill guys. They needed receivers in this class, et cetera. Let's see what they do down the stretch beyond guys that we know about. If there's one thing I know about recruiting is that there are players in play that the media and fans and pundits don't know about. What? There are going to be some <laughs> kids in – yeah, I know, shocking, right? There's going to be yeah. some kids that end up at Penn State, if, if I'm guessing right, that aren't really on the radar right now, one or two others. That's history of recruiting – especially when coaching changes do take place late November into early December. Mm -hmm. So we've got a little ways to go. Now, don't feel bad uh, about this. I, I know I'm being a little harsh here. I don't want to see Penn State. Penn State has put in a lot of hard work for this class of 2024. Yeah. That's why I want to see them finish inside the top 10, at least 10, because I think this class deserves it. I thought Ethan Grunkmeyer was an incredible find. Quentin Martin, I think people are, for whatever reason, they're down on him. He's the most exciting prospect in this class. But overall, I think 2024 has top 10 potential, but you're going to need to add some more pieces to make sure that there's no more doubt when you're ranking these schools. But feel better because Michigan's still behind. Texas is still behind. USC, USC coming into the Big Ten Conference, they're behind. But I don't like that Oklahoma has been making that significant jump. Oregon, Texas is certainly going to do that. So I say that right now at this present time. What, it's Friday, September 22nd, right? Penn State, yes, they are ahead of Texas currently, but Texas is still, uh, they are looking at getting commitments from top 10 prospects in the nation, yeah. top 100 prospects in the nation, and they're favored to get them. Just the race is a little longer for those prospects that Penn State has no in influence on. They, they have no, they're not in the top five, they're not in their top 10, and that's just the unfortunate circumstances. But so I mentioned this likes of, the Texas Longhorns, they're probably going to jump over Penn State. So you have to factor all that in. I just don't want to see James Franklin, Mike Yersich, Manny Diaz as hard work. It's not going to go to waste, but it, I don't want to see it drop from, hey, they were seventh in the country at one time, all the way down to 17th, 18th, and barely be inside the top 20 when all said and done. Like I said, I'm not a huge rankings guy. Did you fill your needs and get some impact players? But it is fun, especially with the fans, mm -hmm. to see your team in the top 10. So... Yeah. I have a lot of faith in Penn State staff, Sider in particular. Obviously, he's a tremendous recruiter. Mm -hmm. I'm curious to see who they can flip down the stretch. I'm going to reserve judgment until that time. Oh, yeah. Flipping players. Nick Marsh is the is the ideal candidate here. They do need – I think they need to add another wide receiver. They definitely need to add some defensive ends. So hopefully, Brian, what we talk about here uh, in a week, two weeks, three weeks' time, definitely before that December signing date, some of those names that we mentioned will be committed to the class of 2024. It's always a great discussion when we have Brian Smith of the Locked On Podcast Network joining us here on Locked On Nittany Lions. Brian, thanks so much for the time, giving us that recruiting insight. And the whiteout weekend is going to be huge for recruiting in season. Penn State needs to leave their mark. And Brian, thanks for that perspective on all of it. Thank you very much. Looking forward to the game.